Coming up, we're making a prop from one of our favorite video games. That's right, this week we're making Little Sister Syringe from Bioshock. To build this project, you're gonna need some supplies, some handy tools, but we got all the stuff to build this project in the Adafruit shop. That's right, the design files are free to download. You can follow the full tutorial on the Adafruit learning system. Link is in the description below. This thing is creepy cool. 3D printed in copper filament for the body, and we're using transparent PLA for the bottle, and rubber Ninja Flex for the topper. That's right, it has a trigger that actuates a push button and turns on the LED, making the bottle glow bright red. We 3D printed this massive needle, which is a whopping 400 millimeters long. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we started on the design. We'll start off by searching for reference material and then trace out the paths to make the artwork. We'll then import the paths inside of Maya and then shell out the design parts inside of 123D Design. To 3D print the parts, we're using the Type A Machines Series 1. We're using copper filament to give the parts more weight, and it's also going to give it a really nice grungy and steampunk look when we polish these parts. You can check out the review on copper fill in this video here for more information on polishing techniques. Each part takes about two and a half hours to print. We found that the best way to remove copper filled parts without damaging the blue tape is to use a palette knife and a spatula. Most parts that are printed in copper fill are gonna need some cleanup so we can trim off the stringy bits using our fingers. We'll move on to the haku snips and then the palette knife. The standoffs are printed with a tight tolerance so we're gonna need to tap the screws using a couple of tweezers. We designed the standoffs to fit number 256 screws, so you'll wanna fasten the screws into the standoffs to create the threading. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the polishing techniques. We tried out the Dremel polishing kit and found these three bits work the best. The white detail abrasive brush, the 280 and the 320 grit abrasive buff. Now polishing takes a lot of time, so you're gonna need at least an hour for each side to get that shiny finish. You're gonna to wanna to focus on one section at a time try to blend the layers together and go back over sections to even out the surface. You can then switch to the white abrasive brush for contours and hard to reach areas. Use the slowest speed to polish the surface without damaging the base layer. Next up, we'll apply some polishing compound to the surface using gloves and we'll rub it into the holes to fill in the surface. The 320 grit abrasive buff helps smooth out the finish and adds contrasting tones to the overall look of the parts. Comparing the surfaces of these parts, you can really see how well the polished part came out. It's definitely worth the time finishing your copper filled prints, and it's a great alternative to the rotary tumbler. To make the circuit, we'll start off by measuring three wires. We're going to be using the 30 gauge silicone coated stranded wires for this. We're also going to use copper foil tape, which we're going to use to connect the rechargeable coin cell battery. We'll cut two pieces and add a blob of solder so we can connect to the silicone coated wires. The 10 millimeter LED is connected to a six millimeter tactile button. We're gonna to need to tin and connect it to the rest of the circuit. You can read the full guide on the Adafruit learning system. Next up, we'll solder the positive and negative connections on the LED and seal it with heat shrink tubing. The copper tape has an adhesive back, so we're gonna to need to peel back a small portion of it to stick it to the positive and negative sides of the coin cell battery. Leave some of the backing on so the copper tape doesn't touch the side of the battery. The bottle was printed in translucent red PLA, which diffuses the LED really nicely. It was also printed without any supports at 200 microns. We found if you orient the needle on the bed diagonally, we can print it as large as it can, which turns out to be 434 millimeters long. We printed it in two halves and just glued them together using E6000. Since clamps won't work, you're gonna need to hold them together for about five minutes until the two parts stick together. The LED itself is inserted into the base of the bottle and it's just mounted in place. Both the bottle and the needle are clamped in place when the two parts are joined together. Before securing it shut, we'll check to make sure that the tactile buttons are mounted in place. Test the alignment of the actuator to see if it lights up. The Rubber Ninja Flex topper grips nicely onto the bottle and diffuses the LED when printed in transparent Ninja Flex. And there you have it, Little Sister Syringe. Definitely one of the coolest 3D printed props that uses multiple materials and of course some simple electronics. Polishing techniques will definitely come in handy in future copper fill projects. So let's take a look at what we learned. So recessed standoffs increase in tolerance with Z depth. Diagonally orienting thin parts will increase the bed volume by 100 millimeters. And then we also learned about Dremel polishing tips and polishing compounds. So if you're thinking about 3D printing your next cosplay prop, definitely check out this stuff from ColorFab and Fender Drives. We got both of those in the Adafruit shop. Definitely let us know what you want us to build in the comments below and be sure to hit that like button if you want to see more cosplay props. 
And if you wanna see us talk about more CAD and slicer settings, tune into our weekly 3D printing show every Thursday right here on the Adafruit YouTube channel. So that's all for this week. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit. See you guys next time. Inject me right here. I need some Adam. <laughs>